we um, start with prayer? Avina Volcano, our Father of King, we thank you that you have given this disappointed time, this set apart time, takes up yeah. our living bread, that is a rehearsal of things that are yet to come. We thank you, Father, that your word is true and forever settled in heaven. We ask that you would give us your spirit, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, hearts to understand. We desire to know your truth. We ask that you would open up our eyes, the eyes of our hearts to understand your truth and the wondrous things in your Torah that you want to teach us and show us. In the name of Yeshua, we thank you. Amen. What I'd like to do is share about Pesach, Passover, in a way that perhaps most of us have never looked at it before. The way most of us have probably perceived Passover is as a time of redemption, and it is, but it's so much more than just redemption. Passover is actually about a marriage. Anybody ever think about that? Have you heard about that before? It's about a marriage between our Creator and His called out people who are named Israel. And there are patterns in the scriptures, and in ancient biblical wedding customs, there's actually 12 steps that they would follow and go through along the process of marriage. And so we're going to look at those today. We're going to look at just the first seven of the 12 steps. Okay? And we're going to use, by way of example, and in the pattern, we're going to talk about Isaac and Rivka, Rebecca. We're going to talk about Elohim and Israel, and we're going to talk about Messiah Yeshua and us, the Kehillah, the true Israel, uh, the true bride. Okay, I'm going to read a lot of scriptures, many of which we're familiar with, but when we look at these scriptures in the light of this marriage, they take on a whole new meaning, a far greater meaning to us in a very personal way. Okay? Now, the scriptures teach us that. Yahweh declares the end from the beginning. And so in Genesis chapter 5, in verse 24, it says, Behekalech hanok et ha-Elohim, ve'inenu ki lakach oto Elohim. And walked with Elohim hanok, ina. But he was not, for Elohim took him. The word, the verb that's used there for took him is the Hebrew verb lakach, and it means to take by the hand, and it includes taking by the hand in marriage. This is very important. Enoch walked with Elohim because he kept the commandments as they were known to him and given to him and taught to him as of that point. Everyone understand that the revelation of the commandments, instructions, Statutes and judgments of Elohim are progressive from Adam until we get to Sinai. And then the fullness of what that really means is found in Yeshua because he magnified the instructions of the Torah by taking it to a, a deeper level that includes not just what we do when we keep the commandments, but the thoughts and intents of our hearts. Okay? Enoch walked with Elohim and he loved him so much and Elohim took him by the hand and took him up. And that is prophetic, and it means something. It's a portrait of something. Okay? Now I say that to go to the next point. We turn to Exodus chapter 6, and I'm going to use the same verses that David shared earlier. And in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, Elohim makes seven I will statements. I will do these things. And one of those statements is, Vilakachti etchem li laam. And I will take you to myself as a people. Same verb, Lakach, to take by the hand, to take by the hand in marriage. Okay? So now we know that the redemption from Egypt is talking about a marriage. This is very important. Okay? When we understand that, everything else that we're going to talk about, all the scriptures that we're going to read and discuss, in the light of that, 
has a whole new meaning, a greater meaning, and it's more purposeful for us and we'll better understand what he's talking about. They're not just isolated scriptures. But we know from the scriptures that all of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is one writing. It's not two parts called OT and NT. It's not 66 books. It's one writing. Okay? And it's the story, it's a love story of our Creator Redeemer to redeem mankind, whosoever will come, to draw each individual person unto himself into a personal relationship. It has been that way from the beginning, from Genesis 1 all the way to the end. And the scriptures start out with the marriage, with the marriage of Adam, the son of Elohim, a marriage on earth, with the bride that was given to him by Elohim. And the scriptures end with a marriage in heaven with Yeshua, the son of Elohim, and his bride. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. And all throughout the scriptures, Yahweh Elohim has been calling people unto himself. Calling them out of the world and of the world system unto himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're going to go through seven of the twelve steps that are in the ancient biblical wedding customs. Alright? The first one, it's called the selection of the bride. Selection of the bride. The father of the bridegroom would send his most trusted servant to the home of the bride in order to select that bride. To choose for his own son. So we're going to look at the pattern in the scriptures. Let's turn to Genesis 24. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to read it. You can open it up and follow along with me. Genesis 24, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to his oldest servant, the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by Yahweh Elohim of heaven and Elohim of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son and the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son. Now, the servant of Elohim is not named in Genesis 24, and there's a reason being. Abraham represents Elohim, the father. Isaac, the promised son, born after the promise represents the Messiah, and the servant represents the Holy Spirit, who never draws attention to himself. He always will lift up Yeshua and point us to Yeshua. But we believe, based upon the scriptures, that that servant was Eleazar, whose name means El or Elohim is my hope. Okay? So you have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. You have Abraham, Isaac, and Eleazar. So Abraham sends his most trusted servant to go get a, a bride for Isaac. And notice what he says. Do not take from among these people the Canaanites among them that I live. Mm -hmm. Now this is very important. This is prophetic. Because the true bride of the Messiah must come from the same people That's right. that this bride mm -hmm. will produce. Mm -hmm. Hello? Amen. Did you get that? That's right. The Messiah will not take a bride from the, outside. from the outside, from the Canaanites, from the people of the world. He will only take a bride who is Israel. We're going to talk about Israel. Okay? This is very important. Okay. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're talking about Israel and Elohim. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. And you're familiar with these verses as well. For you are a holy people, a set apart. Kadosh, set apart. The English translation uses the word holy, but holy doesn't really describe, identify, and convey the meaning of the word kadosh. Kadosh means to be set apart, and it means set apart from sin, iniquity, transgression, and the world, and the world system, and the world values, and consecrated unto Yahweh Elohim. It's both. You come out of something, and we're joined to him. It's both. 
You are a set apart people to Yahweh your Elohim. Yahweh your Elohim has chosen you to be a people for himself, as we read earlier, a special treasure, on Segula, above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people, for you were least of all peoples, but because Yahweh loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Passover is a marriage. There's redemption. And we're going to talk about that also in this whole process. But here, the scriptures teach us that Yahweh chose Israel to be his bride. And those who will be part of the bride have to be chosen in the same way as Rebecca was, as Israel. Okay, now for the new covenant, the renewed covenant. John 6, 44. No one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. The Holy Spirit, the set apart who I has to draw the individual person to the truth. Mm -hmm. Not to a religion, not to traditions, not to customs and rituals and so forth, but to Messiah. Amen. Because redemption, salvation, is not an event. It's not a thing. It's a person. It's about a relationship. Marriage is about a relationship. Passover is about a relationship, not an event per se. Do we understand the difference? If we look at it just as an event, then we're, we're, we, we miss what he wants to teach us. That's why it's a marriage. It's a relationship. John 15. We're familiar with this verse. For you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. So Yeshua chooses his bride. Right? The Holy Spirit, like Eleazar, the servant of Abraham, goes out and gets a bride for the son. Yeshua is like Isaac, the promised son. The son born after the Spirit. Okay. Second step is called the bride price. In Hebrew, we call that mohar. Mohar, the bride price. Let's go back to Genesis 24. Verse 10. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, for all of his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. That was a very large bride price. Okay, the servant, representing the Holy Spirit, is going to bring the bride price. And then skip down to verse 22. And so it was when the camels had finished drinking that the man, this is the servant, took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrist, that's Rivka, weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel and Lilka's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Moreover, she said to him, We have both straw and feet enough and room to lodge. And the man bowed his head and worshipped Yahweh. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, Yahweh has led me to the house of my master's brethren. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. Now, Rivka, Rebecca, had a brother whose name was Levan, Laban, and Laban ran out to the man by the well. So it came to pass when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrist, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebecca saying, Thus the man spoke to me, then he went to the man, and there he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, O blessed of Yahweh, why do you stand outside? For I prepared the house and a place for the camels. And the man came to the house, and he unloaded the camels. We have a nose ring, and we have bracelets weighing ten shekels. I'm going to suggest to you that there was five bracelets that he put on the left hand, and five bracelets he put on the right hand, and they weigh ten shekels, and you've got yourself the Ten Commandments. The true bride of Messiah, the true Israel, from beginning to end, we read about in Revelation, has the testimony of Yeshua and keeps the commandments. Yes. Rebecca is a portrait of the true bride. She's got the Ten Commandments. 
Now there's a nose ring. Half shekel. That's the redemption price. 